actually, I didn't know I was going to speak until maybe a few days ago with Mr. Graham. I accepted the invitation because I knew it was a luncheon and I love to eat, so I'm not going to turn those things down, you know. And uh, then he asked me to give just a small spill of, of why, you know, I believe that the chapels are important in the prison system. And I wrote some things down, and then I got to looking at the uh, folder that Mr. Graham gave us, and uh, I just wanted to point out just a couple of things there. If you'll take a look at the, uh, the first page there, you'll see two offenders, one with a little jumper-looking thing that doesn't have any sleeves, and then another one with sleeves. And the young man with no sleeves on his, on his jumper is a newly received offender. Uh, he just got there. Most of those guys, uh, when they first get there, they have no idea what, the, what, what to expect. They have no idea where to go, what to do, who to talk to, who not to talk to. And some of the first influences are gonna be a chapel, it's gonna be the chaplain, or it's gonna be a gang member. And unfortunately, those things do happen in prison. They're real. The gangs are real. And we try our best, our best to stay on top of that activity and make sure they don't get a hold of them, and we need to get a hold of them first. Uh, the young man on the, on the other side with the shirt on is an experienced offender who has been there a while. He's already been completed through processing and intake, and he's probably already been assigned a unit. Uh, the fact that these two guys are sitting together in some place, more than likely a chapel somewhere, he has a great influence on this young man's life. And better for him to have a positive influence on this young man's life than to have another one who is a gang member out in the dorms and all have the influence first. So the chapels are very important for our business because we can't do it alone. We're outnumbered every day. My staff do their best to watch everything and, and keep an eye on things, but without that chapel, without that, that place to go, to have some type of, of security, some type of, uh, of way to, to know that they can just take a deep breath and, and feel secure and feel safe and feel whole, uh, those chapels are, are, are so important. The gym is a great place, and you know, y'all know as well as I do that we can pray, we can, you know, worship together, we can gather anywhere. But when you have a gym that with, with smelly socks and basketball goes and the echo is out there, and, and you have those little bitty multi-purpose rooms that you can only fit about 20 or 30 in, it's hard to reach the masses in those type of environments. The chapels are so important, and, and I have a couple of numbers here that I wanted to share with you. Um, at the Hutchins unit, by the way, I've been to about five of those chapels that, that were mentioned earlier. The Hughes Chapel, the Lane Murray Chapel, the Wynn Chapel, the Hutchins Chapel, and uh, they're all very nice. I mean, the, and they're used on a daily basis. But just a couple of ideas. Our... Um, our chapels offer over 35 regular programs on a monthly basis. There's only 30 days in the month, but we offer over 35 of them seven days a week. There's something going on every night. Uh, and then, then we have up to 15 specialty programs every year. We have Mike Barber. We have, um, uh, let's see, what else Kairos. do we have? Kairos. Kairos. Those are always fun because you get to eat at those too. <laughs> so if you haven't been to one of those, those are good too. You can tell I like to eat. Uh, but, but what I wanted to really point out was this is a monthly report that we have to report every, uh, every month to, uh, to Huntsville, to the chaplaincy department. And at the Hutchins unit, I've only been here about nine months. But Chaplain Barry, who I knew at another chapel, uh, another unit in Gatesville, the Mountain View unit where I came from, he sees over, him and his volunteers see over 1,600 plus offenders every month. I was like, wow, Chaplain, I mean, we only have like 2,200 offenders and you see 1,600 of them every month? That's almost all of them, almost every one of them. And, and it shows. And I can tell you that the men are grateful. 
for the little things that come into their lives while they're incarcerated. And the women are too. I come from the female unit. We call it girl world. But I come from the female unit. And I was actually shocked when they offered me a position on a male unit because that just doesn't happen. Um, I think they think I'm really hard-headed and I, maybe I can handle some men. I don't know. But anyway, we're getting along just fine. But the men are always excited to see somebody new come in. And the chaplaincy service is one of those areas that brings in new people, new faces, new word every month. And, and it, it's necessary. They get tired of looking at us and listening to us. And we get tired of looking at them and listening to them. <laughs> and it's always great when you get those group of volunteers that come in and bring something fresh, a new energy, uh, a new excitement for them. And it has to come from somewhere. And the chapel, the chapel gives them that. Um, it, it, it's, I can't tell you how important those chapels are. They really, really are. I opened up the, the All Red Unit in 1995, and uh, I can tell you the, the type of offenders that we have on that type of unit, there is a need for that chapel. Um, a lot of those folks are doing a lot of time. And uh, like I said before, you know, you go one way or you go the other, and it's better to reach them and, and reach the masses through that one way, which is the chapel. Uh, that volunteer is important versus the other. Now, Hamilton unit is a little bit different unit, and I noticed that you have them on the program as well as being another chapel, number 10, maybe. Uh, the Hamilton unit is um, a CIP unit, and they're in and out. It's a revolving door. So you have to make a quick impact there. But those people are looking for something different. Those folks are, you know, you have a lot of drugs, you have a lot of addiction that goes through those doors right there. And those folks are going to be out in our communities within six months, six to nine months. And, and they're going to be working at that, that Walmart or that Dillard's or that grocery store. And, and they're going to be right back in our communities that fast. And if we don't make an impact in their lives at that time, then the chances of them making an impact negatively on our society it is great as well. Um, I don't really have anything else. I just wanted to, to, to say that anyone in this room, if you ever want to take a look, take a tour, see what the prison life is about, you're more than welcome to call up and we can schedule. You can go through Mr. Graham or, or someone and we can schedule a little tour just so you can have an idea. Um, at the Hutchins unit, like this young man said on the video, it's unfortunate, but we hold two services every weekend just to accommodate as many as we can, and we still have to turn some back. Uh, so, you know, not everybody gets a chance to go out there, but we do the best we can. Thank y'all so much. <laughs>